hey everybody how are you doing so i decided to do um a live on a few things that um, i've never shared before or uh, talking in a way that you've never seen me before so um yeah let's get right into it so um i asked ChatGPT to ask me a few questions and i didn't prepare for this so i don't know what to expect so i'm just gonna answer a few questions about you know my life um and about me personally and i hope that gives you a little bit of an insight on my personal life so uh, topic number one is childhood and upbringing what was your favorite childhood memory and how has it shaped who you are today mm. so i think favorite childhood memory um was when i uh, bought my horse so i remember I sold my bicycle um, to someone to actually afford buying a horse um, together with my dad or my mom. <laughs> so, so he bought the, my dad bought the mare and the mare had a filly. So um, I bought the filly. So um, at the time, I think the filly was about six months old. So um, uh, its name was Patches. The mother's name was Cleo. And it was like a... Uh, uh, a white horse with um, large um, brown patches on it so he was so um, beautiful um, actually was it a he or a she I can't even remember um, but in any case patches so um, I spent most of my time just watching that filly and um, we put a halter on it and I remember I could um, lead it with the halter so I spent lots of time with it, talking to it and trying to, you know, uh, make it tame. And um, I didn't know anything about horses at the time. I just was in love with horses. So I think I was about hmm, 16 or 17 at the time. So, yeah, that's my fav most favorite childhood memory. So what is your most favorite childhood memory? Drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear that. Okay, question number two. Did you always know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Yes, I've always known that. Um, I remember as a little girl selling silkworms, selling chocolates, um, selling secondhand clothes, anything I could get my hands on. Um, my parents always referred to me as a Jew. <laughs> they said I could always make money, you know, try to make money anywhere. And I think it comes from my mom and dad um, who had an entrepreneurial mindset. So my mom and dad were, uh, my dad was in the army, my mom was in the police. And they all, they both had entrepreneurial spirit. They uh, both worked for um, Paul Myers Success Motivation Institute at a point in their life where they sold like personal development stuff. And I think that's where personal development and entrepreneurship really, um, that bug bit me. So, um, yeah, did you always want to, uh, did you always know that you wanted to be an entrepreneur? I'd love to hear that. So put it in the comments below. Who was your, who was the biggest influence in your life growing up? Hmm. I would say my grandmother. So my grandmother had a doctorate, um, in educational psychology. She was a very, um, like if there's one word to describe my grandmother, it would be formidable. So um, she, I remember she drove like a red BMW and she had black leather um, gloves um, and she was a preacher's wife and she had this beautiful black, um, um, what do you call it, a jacket that she wore always. And she just made such an impression. She always had this pearls around her neck. She was very, um, what do you call it in English, stately. She always looked like a million dollars and um, she she just had this demeanor around her and, and she really uh, made an, a big impression on me and I always wanted to be like her. Always wanted to keep studying like her. Um, okay, so life as a faith pioneer. How has your faith played a role in your journey as a business owner? Hmm. So um, my faith in the beginning... Um, when the Lord called me and he said to me, okay, you should leave your bookkeeping studies and study Christian counseling. I was like, hmm, 
okay, there's no money in Christian counseling, but let me start studying. And then um, it's, it's, you know, my, my life turned into business coaching. So I, I wouldn't have, you know, known that it would turn out this way. So um, I think, I think in the beginning, um, my business was about me and my kingdom and, you know, my influence and how I would grow and how I would do things. And later on, um, my business morphed into um, dying to self and doing it for the kingdom and um, building his kingdom and giving and more about him and less about me. So in the beginning, faith was just a Sunday thing, maybe. But now faith is like everything that I do. My whole business is faith based um, and it is permeated through my whole business, through my whole, um, through my day, everything I do is permeated in that so yeah one scripture that has carried me through tough seasons um philippians 4 13 i can do all things through christ who strengthens me so that has been an anchor for me for very long for those of you that know um, i wrote my matric when i was 14 and 15 and that taught me that nothing is impossible and i think that's why i love that verse so much uh, was there a specific moment when you knew God called you to serve Christian women in business? So for me, um, um, except for my calling that the Lord said I should study Christian counseling, um, I think um, for me it was a progressive thing because I started my business in 2016. It had nothing to do with faith-based Christian women and businesses. <laughs> um, it was more about wellness and then it uh, moved into more of a mindset coaching. And then um, it was life coaching, mindset coaching. And then it moved into business coaching. Um, and through this whole process, through this eight-year journey, um, I first started out helping everybody. And then I said, okay, now um, I just want to work with women. I don't want to work with men. Um, um, and then I realized that when I work with women, I want to talk about scripture i want to pray for them i want to talk about jesus i don't want to say you know god or whoever your higher power is i wanted to say jesus and I, and i felt like i was being incongruent because i couldn't really talk about my faith um and i couldn't be myself so um that's when i realized okay i am made to work with christian women um okay uh, the next category overcoming challenges what is the biggest challenge that you faced in business or life and how did you overcome it um, and i want to, you to also write yours in the comments below uh, what is the biggest challenge you faced in business or life and how did you overcome it um wow sure biggest challenge i think for me in business it was always the thing of um not having the money to invest having to create something out of thin air I'm not having the resources from the very beginning so um, I started my business literally with a whatsapp group with no finances at all um, and it slowly but surely grew to into what it is today so I think that has been a big struggle um, it has taught me a lot of things yet um, it has slowed me down I think I would have been lots further if I had the financial structure to um, really go into it in the beginning uh, um, okay uh, was there a time that you wanted to give up and how did you push through oh for sure <laughs> for sure there was a lot of times where I just said I quit you know in my um, in my wellness with the wellness coaching I was a weight loss coach in the beginning um, and I lost like 27 kilograms. So my whole family together lost about 97 kilograms. Started studying personal training. So, uh, studied athletic nutrition. Had lots of clients. Had amazing breakthroughs. And people that won actual um, famous weight loss challenges. Some of my clients. And then I sabotaged myself. Gained back all of the, the weight. Um, and then I quit in search of trying to find out, you know, what is going on. And that's what led me to the mindset coaching. I mean, that's where I did cognitive behavioral therapy and the, and the life coaching and the mindfulness and the NLP and all those things to kind of understand why do I do this to myself? Um, 
so I did that um, and many times in my journey where things didn't go as planned I wanted to quit but I always came back to it so there was always this moment or this time that I that I said I'm done I'm not gonna do it again and then I would just um, basically get back into it again so um, it's like moth to a flame um, yeah so um, hmm what else what was there ever a time okay um, okay I did that what failure taught you the most about yourself or your purpose what failure taught you the most about yourself or your purpose Hmm. I'd have to think about that. Failure, failure, failure. I can't really, I can't really think about that. So I'm going to skip that one. Uh, personal habits and preferences. What's one habit or routine that you can't live without? Ooh, that would be reading. So reading and studying. So I love reading. I love studying. Um, I read or study the equivalent of two books a week. So I love doing that. I'm always busy with a course or a book or a podcast series or <laughs> something that helps me understand the next level. So, yeah. Uh, if you ever had a whole day to yourself with no responsibilities, how would you spend it? So probably, probably, um, probably just zoning out on like like a Netflix series or something because I never watch TV. Um, I rarely watch TV. So when I really have time off and I have nothing, nothing, nothing to do, then I would look for something that has uh, a psychological something, something to it. And I would love to um, just start watching it. And I'm someone that I, I don't like watching TV. And if I start, then I can't stop. Like if I start watching a series... It needs to be a mini series because if it's got six or seven seasons, I know that three or four weeks is buggered because I start watching it and I binge watch it until it's done. I can't um, stop when I start. So um, I rarely do that. Uh, coffee, tea or something entirely, something else entirely. So mostly water. Uh, I drink lots and lots of cold water every day. Um, I do love coffee. I try not to drink more than three cups a day. Um, but yeah, I love water. Um, behind the scenes, what is a typical day in your life like? Um, hi, Sophia. Uh, what is a typical day in your life like? So mine would start with uh, waking up and then I would come, um, I would sit on um, like one of my um, couches in my room and then I'd do Bible study, I probably would listen to a preach or um, a podcast on some sermon or whatever that I'm busy with or a Bible study. And then I would come and I would work a little bit. And because I homeschool my kids, I don't do the school run in the morning. So all the kids get themselves ready for the day. Um, and about at nine o'clock, they start with school and I uh, go and do the whole bath routine. Like I like to spend lots of time in the bathroom. Like I, I lie in the bath literally an hour every day because that's the only time that I really have for myself. Um, so um, I do that and then it's like get out, do my hair. And then it's like business and school business and school so I keep the kids going because they're on computerized bookkeeping uh, um, computerized school um, and then I just keep going with my business I would normally take a break around 1 or 2 p.m. Um, and then just sit up with my feet or take a quick nap um, and then I would come back and work again so um, work again until let's say 6 p.m. and then a bit of family time and sometimes I would take a, a third shift it just depends on how much work I need to get done so that is my um, typical daily routine how do I balance homeschooling family and running a business well at the moment I used to have it all like segmented like this is the time for this and this is the time for that at this point everything is just running and I just have a, I have these little booklets and I just write my top 10 priorities on these pages and I, hi I highlight the ones that need to get done first and I just every day 
try to get the most done that's all i do um so that is how i do that um what is one thing you your audience probably doesn't know about you hmm i think i share everything with you guys <laughs> Um, one thing you probably don't know about me is that I love animals very, very much, but that I'm highly allergic. Like when I was a child, I used to bring home all kinds of animals. Like my, my dad and mom used to jump at the health and racket club and I would go outside searching for garden snails to, to get, bring us pets. Or my dad would be on the farm and then he hit a bat in the house with a tennis racket and I, then I would heal it back to health, you know, put it in toilet paper and heal it back to health. Or I would buy um, little mouse, rats, uh, hamsters at the pet shop. Um, if somebody at school gave away a dog or a cat or something, Yana was the one that brought it home. So my father always used to say when, when he saw me coming from school with something, you know, in my school, underneath my jersey, he, he would always say, oh no, what, what now? What did she bring now? So I always had a little zoo, you know, always fish and everything, <laughs> um, parrots cockatoos whatever i could find so um but in my adult life i find myself allergic so um um we sharissa has a dog um but i can't have pets in the house because that makes me very um like it tears up my eyes it makes me allergic so yeah um vision and aspirations hi sinet <laughs> you should have become a veterinarian yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, visions and aspirations. What is your why behind everything you do in your business? So for me, it is about stewardship. I want to get to the end of my life and then I want the Lord to say, well done, good and faithful steward. Um, I always want to be a role model for my daughters. I want them to see that you can, you know, if you set your mind to anything, you can accomplish anything you want. Um, so that's why I do that. And obviously for me, for, it's personal satisfaction as well. Like I said, I love learning and I love um, studying and I love teaching as well. So I love spending time with the women that I help, um, creating stuff for them, uh, making it better, creating systems, structure from complex things. Where do you see yourself and your business five years from now? So that's an interesting question. I'd probably see myself as um, as a digital agency as well as a coaching service. So I think I would have a digital agency um, and I'm working on a project on the side where I have 17 positions and, and we're working on like... Um, a group thing where where a group of Christian women have diverse skill sets and we're working okay. together, you know, in um in one uh, headquarters to do all the things. So that's what I'm busy developing on the side and studying towards. Um all right, what's that? What's what else? Okay. What legacy do you want to leave behind for your daughters? So I just want them to know that they can you know, they can achieve whatever they set their minds to and they can have freedom and autonomy and um, I want them to be able to live out their values without having to compromise that, especially their faith value. Uh, I feel like the world, you know, the world has so much pressure um, and I want them to live the life that they want to live, not what somebody else is like prescribing them to do. Um, if you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, probably it would be, and it would be interesting to say, but it would be like chuck steaks or steak. Um, I recently like, um, did 60 days of carnivore. And before that I would have said pizza because I love pizza. Um, but my most favorite food at this point is definitely a nice juicy steak with just salt on it. Um, just fried in butter. Um, I would eat that for the rest of my life. And I probably will. Like I plan on when I've, um, I'm planning on moving to Mpumalanga end of December. So I'm planning on getting back into my carnival diet. 
as soon as the move is over um, and then I only eat literally eat red meat butter and eggs so yeah uh, what is your guilty pleasure when you need a break from everything so when I need a break from everything probably to go visit someone to just get out of the house or get a change of scenery just do something else be in another place just completely different where I could just you know not think about the stuff that goes on in my scenario you know something completely different as a change of scenery that would be a guilty pleasure do you have a funny or embarrassing story from your entrepreneurial journey hmm funny or embarrassing story hmm not really not that i can recall right now do you have a funny or relatable or um embarrassing story from your entrepreneurial journey that you want to share share it below um lost question uh okay yeah, last question um what is one thing that you're curious about that you want to know about me put that in the comments below and that is it my my lovely ladies thanks for watching snake thanks for watching sophia thanks for watching billy i'll see you guys later bye